Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Episode number 229. 229. Glad to be here. Happy to be alive. We are indeed. We're here. How's Robbie today? Fantastic. How about you? I don't know. I got the impression you got one of those colds, and I don't want to be too Yeah. Close, but here I am anyway. I'll just read this <laughs> way. It's uh, Tuesday, February the 7th, 2012. Going to be an early spring. <laughs> well, what does that even mean when we haven't had any winter? It's like... Yeah. yeah, it's been sad, really, because at this time of year, you get a lot of fundraisers that go on, and uh, and uh, a, a lot of stuff has been canceled. I know there's the, a local. The Berry Winter Carnival actually got through, but I was surprised. Like even well, the they'd ice still be able to do it. Kinda, yeah, it was kind of be it, tough. it used to be done. But they use ice blocks. When I was right? a kid, when I was a kid, it was all done out on the bay, and I think there's like a boat. <laughs> yeah, but that was during the ice ages. Hey, easy now. Easy. So everything was frozen back then. I remember I was in a speed skating competition and my mom came you down. You were in a speed skating competition? And, uh, well, I was still short, but I wasn't fat back then. And uh, I just am trying to picture a kid on speed skates. And, and, and poor mom got a little close to the... Mom went for a swim. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, well. How's, uh, how's everything for you? Nice to have you here. Uh, Somebody just said when I was a kid, Hendrix was alive. And you know what? It's true. It's true. <laughs> it is it's true. true people yeah i mean you, you try to make it funny and it's absolutely true uh looking around the globe tonight we've got viewers from all over this beautiful world this is uh this is people who are tuned into the show right now uh looks like we've got some people over in kazakhstan oh one just north there's one in uzbekistan uh, Ubekistan? <laughs> well, you're close. Austria. And I was talking to one of our viewers from Austria this week. Looks like they're tuned in. Very good. UK. We've got lots of viewers over there. Nice to see you. Belgium. And, of course, over here on our continent. Is there anybody from Barrie in there? Well, you know, there probably are. Hmm. Oh, there's one. You see us? Oh, there we are. And there's somebody down in New Tech. Or is Almost to New, new Tecumseh? Essa, or as the Aurelia? locals call it, New Tech. Come on. <laughs> is that what they call it? <laughs> That's what they call it. You can get this map from map.cat5.tv. Very cool interactive map. I don't probably suggest that you do it right now during the live show. That was brave of me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because all of our servers are kind of combined right now. We are working on setting up a content distribution network, which I'm very excited about. That's going to alleviate some of the, uh, the weight on our server during a, a live show, but go find yourself there on the map during the uh, during the week. Oh, That'd be fun. Yes, we have new electricity here, right? We sure do. <laughs> I almost wow. tripped over the new blue cable. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. I'll get you to tell us what's coming up in the news, and then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the electrical issues that we've had over the past little while and uh, how we've been able to alleviate that. You can just feel the ambiance of clean power tonight. That's why I'm here. I'm just soaking up the ambiance, the sure joie de vivre. Is that what it is? There's a, yes, there's something in the air. Joie de vivre. Okay, you know what's coming up in the newsroom tonight? Secure smartphones powered by Android are making their way to US officials. And Nikon has announced the D800, a 36 megapixel camera. 36? 36 of them. That's older than me. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you were not alive when Hendrix was, <laughs> was around. Okay. Facebook and Google have removed content to avoid getting blocked in India. And uh -oh. Apple has had to pull iPad and iPhone devices in Germany. So stick around. These stories and others are coming up later in the newsroom. Well, they are. I just kind of like... There. Yeah. All right. You I give got me a rough time for making noise I know. and fidgeting. Well, I went to grab my, my pen and instead I flung it. My favorite was when you had those it. nano dots so that I got to play with. Yeah, that was kind of fun. And actually, that Very flashlight, dangerous. that was way cool. <laughs> the crank flashlight, I love that. Notice that I didn't let him try the uh, the hat that controls his computer because I can just, <laughs> just see him pulling a Stevie Wonder, you know? I can oh, absolutely boy. see it. Oh, my. 
Well, we got through the news. Um, I would no, that was just the teaser. The, the news is yet to come. All right, the news is yet to come. Hey, I want you to send us a postcard. Uh, you can send it to Category 5 Technology TV, Postal Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. And you saw some picture. Uh, you saw our map about uh, where the viewers are. We'd yeah. like to be able to associate a, a postcard with uh, with many of those areas of the world. So send yours in. And were those O's or zeros in that twenty nine? Oh oh nine. But I mean, who who's gonna care at the post Moi? office? Okay, sorry. I'll <laughs> leave that alone. Hmm. We also have a mobile site that is up tonight and working great. Mobile.cat5.tv. You can scan that QR code with your mobile device. Scan that QR code. You go right ahead. Do that later. We'll do that later, folks. He'll do that later. Later. When has Eric been known to to put something (laughs) off? (laughs) So (laughs) we we had some pretty serious hydro issues here over the past long time. And the power. Yeah. Hydro's a, a finicky thing, eh? And it's you know for the rest of the world, because um, when you're down, in, say even just south of the border in the states, and you say mm. hydro lines, they say what? They're power lines. Electricity, folks. Hydro comes from hydroelectric power, which is how we used to generate a lot of our power. But oh. we still call it hydro here. It's electricity, but it, hydro. You know, water, hydrophobia. You know, rabies. We talked about that. Before. The more useless knowledge that we can get into your head tonight. The better off you are. Yes. So, so we are having electrical issues, or we have had electrical. We have issues. had. We're, we're seemingly not. But we have a company anymore. called uh, Hydro. Well, yeah. Okay. Carry on. Uh, Quartery Electric is the official uh, electrical company of Category Five Technology TV, and they came in. Uh, there's their contact information. I'd encourage you to uh, contact them. Uh, certainly, if you're in the Barrie area, uh, anywhere within say 100 kilometers of Barrie. Uh, great opportunity for you to find some honest electricians and people that know what they're talking about. We had a couple of companies in, uh, Quartery being you know our our best choice, and and came in here and and I, I think really got things figured out. So I, I'd like to have Richard uh, from Quartery Electric on on the show uh, because he he knows a lot of stuff uh, that I don't understand. Well, I I guess I understand the theories behind like sine wave electricity and how sine waves work, but I wouldn't be able to. Uh, articulate that information to you effectively but it, what's interesting is is because of the way that you know an old house gets built you know 20 25 years ago and maybe you've had some hydro issues or electrical issues that you're <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to nail down we've got UPSs on everything so why computers are still getting baked why we're getting surges and why we're getting uh, light bulbs just blowing out randomly and none of the neighbors are it was it was confusing and, and strange turns out when they wired the place, they wired everything on like each floor on its own circuit. So the studio, the whole studio, I'm talking the basement, is on one circuit. Ah. You're talking the freezer, which has got a compressor. What? Right. One one circuit. So you've got yeah, one, one breaker circuit. for the whole basement. Essentially, yeah. I think that's kind of how it worked. Mm. The double breaker. Okay. But yeah, no, it's 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 like it's it's an old old the way that they used to do it i guess so anyway so we're pulling everything from one side of the sine wave and it's totally messing up the power in the house we've got a lot of uh fluorescent lights and and the inverters and the ups's and things can cause some real yeah. wacky stuff to go on so yeah well yeah you want your freezer and your washing machine yeah. and whatever else might be on on a different circuit from your gear so yeah. Quartery Electric came in. They put in a couple of new uh, uh, new circuits specifically for the studio, and we're now on both sides of the sine wave. So all of our servers are balanced uh, c- kind of between the two sides of the sine. So really, you know, already we're uh, seeing the difference in, in power. Like you fire something up and the lights don't flicker. Well, That's new. Yeah, yeah. It's always a bad sign when the dishwasher goes on and your computer dips <laughs> and for a second. Yeah. The computer goes and boom. Yeah. Well, what would happen is, is I would turn on the system and the UPS would beep a couple times, click, and come, and everything would come on, no, no problem. The lights would flicker. So there's obviously there was something going on. Now that has not happened. Now All that right. the new circuits are in. So thank you again to uh, Quartery Electric, and of course, uh, you know, again, if you're within about 100 kilometers of Barry. 
check them out. Uh, and they do also uh, provide services uh, for, for business uh, outside of that area as well. So we'll be talking more with them uh, in the future, I'm sure. So No doubt. Mm-hmm. Well, you see, people are already asking power problem, uh, power questions in the chat room, and no, that's what I'm talking about. So hydro. we'll get them. We'll and get and them they're on concerned here. about low tide and high tide. You know what happens? Yeah. Is, you know, is that how it works? Yeah. See, actually, the Niagara River was one of our great huge hydroelectric uh, yeah. dams. So build up the dam, turns the turbines, generates some electricity. We harness it. We distribute it through the power grid. But now, of course, we have nuclear and coal-fired plants and all kinds of stuff. So it's not just hydro. But we still call the company Hydroelectric. See, I actually, think there's Ontario some, Power. I think generation. some of your knowledge actually dates back to Hendrix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the history of how hydro came to be. <laughs> uh, Garby, Niagara Falls is still a power plant. They still generate electricity down there. Yeah, yeah. sure. I wouldn't see why not. It's a lot of free power. Yeah, it's a damn big damn. That is. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, we're going to be uh, we're going to be right back after this. We're going to talk about what's coming up in the show, but stick around. Uh, we'll be right back. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com This is Category 5 Technology TV and you will find us online at www.category5.tv I was hinting a little earlier, we are upgrading our site to support content distribution network and uh, very very excited about that what that means is that we've got servers that are point uh, that are basically located all over the world so that if you are for example going to our website from the UK you're going to get a server that's central uh, that's local to the UK rather than going overseas to our, our servers down in California so it's going to make a big difference it's not in place just yet we're building it the new website is in the works it's called v3 in code name and you can find out more on our wiki it's wiki.category5.tv you can go up to recent editions and you'll see uh, my post there about the new the new website what are you giggling about <laughs> sorry this is somebody was you know you were mentioning how old i was and how young you were but then we, we, how did we, that have, we have a friend somewhere in the netherlands a yacht who uh, yeah. pointed out that i'm still young because i still have hair unlike yeah. my host here w oh <laughs> Now we're going to just start <laughs> throwing things at each other. Well, look, I, I a actually... A big shout out to my friend, Yacht. Hey. Hey, Jot. <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think I treat you guys pretty good here at the studio. You treat Krista well. She gets pizza. Krista gets, Wells. Krista Wells well. She gets donuts. I know. these. Oh, they, <laughs> geez. You just had that right, ready to go, didn't you? Well, these guys are... I mean, I say these these guys, the, the co-hosts here are very extremely jealous of Krista because anytime yes. she's here, yes, like, h how does this go down? Then I say, well, you, you guys got to be more strategic. And, and you're wondering why Christy uh, moved on and got into radio. I didn't give her enough goodies. No goodies. Oh, dear. Hardly ever see Hillary. Rachel. I, I know from the chat, like, people love you, Eric. <laughs> And we don't we send don't, me some food. No. <laughs> well, I we don't want to lose you. So we gotta we gotta we gotta tread carefully. I did not get to keep the magnets. He took them back, Garby. So before we move on with the show, <laughs> I, I've got you a cherry pie, and I, I hope that you're hungry because we're we're just gonna we're just gonna enjoy. You're gonna enjoy that. So Ooh. dig in, dig in. Hurry up! Come on, you're holding. Can I get up a glass show. of milk, please? Hurry up! Come on. <laughs> You're going to ask me to do the news? This is an awfully big pie. It's an awfully big pie. So should I take it right from it. the middle? Or Go right I... from the middle, yeah. I'm not sure I trust this yet. Uh -oh. You're making a mess, dude. <laughs> you got to see me in a restaurant. Nothing hidden in the middle? It looks all safe? That looks like a good pie. Mm. Fresh baked today. <laughs> He's 
just like savoring it. <laughs> it's like, hurry up, we're gonna wait until you're done. I think you'd better. And he's just, hmm, you know, I've okay, been, okay, I'll I've put- been waiting for this moment. Take that, all you other co-hosts. <laughs> <laughs> I got my very own pie. <laughs> Take a glass of milk, Robbie. Oh, dear. <laughs> Should I carry on, or did you well, want me to join you in the show here? You know, it's all good. Maybe you, if you need a tissue. <laughs> here you go. This is one of those things that my wife saw that I bought this, and she said, I saw that in the store, and I thought, what kind of weirdo would buy that? <laughs> and then in comes her husband with one. Well, I saw it in the washroom and I thought, <laughs> what kind of weirdo would put that in the washroom? It looked like a little menu. It's, it's an oversized iPod. And we're going to be looking at the device. iPod tonight. Tonight we're going to be learning how we can actually control our computer with our device. Whether wow. it be, uh, I'm going to be looking at iDevices because uh, I'm using the iPod tonight. Now I see. I the, brought a device. Yeah, you've brought uh, something interesting for us to look at tonight. It's a pie cutter. No. Um. Oh, I, I smell an unboxing video. Well, you know, um, it's a Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Oh. Yeah. No, this is not product placement. We're. <laughs> yeah, they didn't send this. <laughs> Um, I really haven't even played with it. I haven't had time. Look at this. Um. Okay. Does it does it turn on? Oh, my target. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh wow. You can show them. Don't just show. No, me. sorry. <laughs> well, let's get out of this. I'm not gonna. So hey, I want to. You know, Here, if we set it? this up with your Wi-Fi, yeah, um, we could watch uh, Category5.tv on here. Live. So show us your way around. Now, you just got this. Uh, yeah, I really haven't even played with it yet. Um, now, I don't have... Um, I only have it hooked up with Wi-Fi in my house. I did that uh, mm-hmm. just the other night. So I'm not hooked up here. So I don't think we'll <laughs> actually get online here. Well, that's very cool. So this is a, an Android device. It is. Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. It looks very cool. Looks very and, nice. Uh, cool. Well, congrats so, on that. Yeah, I don't know. I'd Maybe. like to uh, see our app. You know, bring it up yeah. next, next time you're... Uh, well, let's uh, hook, next time hook us up to yeah. your Wi-Fi next time I'm in. Yeah. And we'll play some more. But there yeah, so I'm going to play with that in the next uh, little while. But uh, what, uh, Now, with the tablet, what is, what's kind of your plan as far as usability? What are you going to be using it for? Well, you can also set up a remote desktop on it, mm-hmm. so I can access files up in my yep. other computer, mm-hmm. and uh, I do guitar lessons and that sort of thing. I'm thinking I can access some uh, right some stuff. You can actually get music stand. And you can download music that allow you to put your tablet on your music stand and put your sheet music. Um, you know, and now things, they've tabs. had uh, you know music readers for years that you sure, can yeah. sort of put on a stand. But uh, a buddy of mine, really good, uh, good buddy, a good musician, uh, Jerry Markman, has a, an iPad. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, he's uh, you know, he's not twenty either, so he's got it nice, right up and close where he can sure, see it. Yeah. And uh, he uses it on stage. He's got all kinds awesome. of all his tunes in there, and it's mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he loves it. Very cool. Plus, it does can I can I have a? You may. I haven't seen this yet. So, okay, so it's got a docking port on the bottom. Yeah, it has a headphone jack on the top. Um, there's no it's USB got a camera. port. It's got a anything. flash. It's got a camera on the front and the back. You can switch it. And yeah. You can, uh, it's got a flash. Edit it. It's got a little application where you can... It's got a microphone and spe- stereo speakers at that. Yeah. Very nice. So, oh, and it has the... Oh, that's for a SIM. So this is this yes, will allow you to connect to... Um, but, yeah, I just didn't buy another data package. No, sure. I already have a and, and to use it on Wi-Fi yeah. is fantastic, and then you can use it for free. Yeah. And you can just, like you say, bring up... Category 5, bring up your computer desktop, exactly. things like that. So. And we're going to be looking at how we can control our desktop in just a few minutes' time. So, But in the meantime, we should uh, jump into some viewer questions. Oh, I thought we were going to have more pie. No, you go ahead. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's hard you to do when I'm doing questions. questions. All right. Well, here's one from, <laughs> I guess this is from the website. And this is from uh, Robert Gorzinski. Gorzinski. Hey, Robert. It's from Robert Gorzinski. Yes. He helped us with pronunciation there. Okay, and he's running Ubuntu 11.10. Hey, Robbie, I have a Netgear Ready NAS NV Plus NAS device with four times two terabyte hard drives installed, giving me a total of 
four terabytes of storage. 5.4. My question is that I want to be able to back up this NAS. I know that I could buy another NAS to back it up to, which would be the simplest solution, but not cheap at around $800 plus. Mm. I could build a free NAS box, but don't really want another PC as I don't really have the room. I thought about using a cloud service, but this isn't viable due to the large amount of data I will need to move to the cloud. Hmm. Ideally, I want something that is small and compact so that I can store it off-site and which isn't too expensive. Any ideas? By the way, Hmm. great show and keep up the great work. Thanks. Robert Robert. Brzezinski, Melbourne, Australia. Good day, mate. Oops, sorry. I'll stop. The first thing that came to mind was whether or not Unraid would be an option. But you say you don't want another PC, but we're looking for the, the ec- economical way to do it. Here's the problem. You've got 5.4 terabytes of data, potentially. That's how much storage you have on that NAS. Network attached storage is what NAS is. Um, the problem is, is if you want to back it all up to one device, it's going to have to be a, a RAID or some kind of Something, RAID because yeah. there is no 6 terabyte hard drive that's... Uh, available in on the consumer market so you would have to have something that uh, that's along those lines so so unraid comes to mind let's see what we could do let's say if we had uh, a couple of two terabyte drives so i'm gonna i'm gonna say two four six right so if i had three hard drives here's the great thing mm, okay with redundancy that's only going to give me 3.63 terabytes because that's going to use one of those drives as the um, parity drive, okay? If you used Unraid without a parity drive, keeping in mind, now here's the catch, you're going to lose any amount of redundancy. So if one hard drive crashes, the entire array technically can't be rebuilt or you you lose everything on the one disc what's unique about unraid is unlike a like a raid uh a raid 10 or a, a raid zero for example here's a good example a raid zero See, i've effectively ruined this pie for everyone else because it's only one pie but if we had a bunch of it's just for you bud okay. eat up i'll change the camera so that they can only see me you dig in eat um so here's the thing with Unraid is that uh, unlike a RAID 0, which if you crash one hard drive, you lose all the data on all the hard drives. With Unraid, if you crash one hard drive, you only lose the data on that hard drive. Unless you have parity, then you can install a new hard drive and you, and you gain your data back. So without a parity drive, if you have three drives and one crashes, you lose all the data off that one drive. Okay, But in your case, here's my thinking, Robert, is in your case, this is a backup of your existing system. So as a backup, the only way, the see, that then becomes redundancy. So even if you lost the data off of one of the drives, that data on that one drive is in fact a copy of data on your NAS. So it, you already have redundancy there. So he you can get away with it. He was mentioning wanting this off-site, though. Yeah, that's well. You you can't start it without offsite, just like right. you were saying about using the cloud, right? It, it's so much data that you're not going to be able to do it. So you build the system locally, you back everything up to it first, and then you can do offsite R syncing or something okay. like that, or R diff uh, is going to be the way to go. But so with Unraid, three two terabyte drives. Here's why I'm thinking it. The first thing you said is I want a cheap solution. Three two terabyte drives are going to be, you know, green drives. They're fairly cheap. Uh, you might want to wait till the price comes down, you know, because of the flooding in uh, in Asia. Um, but with that, you can get a free copy of Unraid because the free version will support up to three drives. So oh. it's free software to you. So uh, check out our Unraid uh, capacity calculator at Unraid <coughs> Unraid dot category five dot TV. Okay, Robert, that would be my first suggestion. Other than that, because you have 5.4 terabytes, you're going to need 6 terabytes, basically, of storage space. You could do individual drives. You could get, like, a docking bay uh, from Thermaltake, pop in a 2 terabyte drive, back up 2 terabytes of your data, move it off-site, put in another one, back up another 2 terabytes of different data. But then it gets a little bit hard to manage. Okay, well, did I back up the stuff from these folders, or did I back up the stuff from these folders? It's a lot more ideal to create a volume and uh, be able to back up everything to one volume. So let me know if that helps. Okay, Robert, um, Unraid is, uh, again, available for you free because it's three drives. That gives you six 
terabytes if you go without parity. With parity, the same amount of drives will give you 3.6. What's a two terabyte drive going for these days? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the price has, you know, gone way up because of, you know, Western Digital, the manufacturers in Tha- uh, Thailand uh, were completely submerged in water for several months. And, uh, you know, that, I guess, has receded. But there's, th- yeah, that's what do you do with a machine yet. that has been <coughs> submerged? You know, the, the, the specialized manufacturing machines that create the devices, yeah. the hard drives, are so specialized. I mean, these things were built 20 years ago and in a lot of cases, and they just keep building and building more hard drives. Those things were submerged, so they need to build more, but yeah. it's not something that you can order overnight, right? So even these companies are getting hit hard. And No, I mean, the devastation over there is just, it's affected so horrible. many things from auto manufacturing to yeah. even trying to get guitar parts, you know, it's <laughs> and the computer. I mean, yeah. So yes. that's, that's why hard drive pricing is going up. So I was saying to somebody um, just the other day who was looking for a backup drive, she says, well, I saw a hard drive, external hard drive for 70 bucks or something at the store. I was like, well, buy it because that's, <laughs> that's old stock. Yeah, That's stuff that they bought before the flooding because now I'll guarantee you it's double that, at least close, you know. So And hard drives you know, are way through the roof and, and increasingly so they're becoming hard to get, hard for stores to get. So, uh, with the big box stores who have warehouses that had three three thousand drives in stock, right. they can order them from their warehouse, right? They're not ordering. You're probably still getting them at Costco. However, you're, <laughs> you're not going to get. But the, you know what I mean? Like they have a parts. warehouse yeah. with thousands of drives that they have already purchased. So when they get more drives, you see, you know, the big box stores getting more drives. Well, that's because they've got warehousing yeah. of their own. But then as soon as those run out. The, there's more demand than there is supply so we're going to see pricing go way up and it already has so that's that's the issue so there you go yeah all right we have a question here from nathan hey nathan and uh he's running linux mint and xp <laughs> so i bought a video card to be able to record shows off of tv <laughs> So I have taped one of my shows, and now I want to compress them so they are not so big. I have seen people online compress TV shows to around 300 meg and still look good. But everything I try either does not compress the video or Mm. looks like crap. Mm. I would also like to rip my favorite DVDs to small files as well. How can I do this in Linux? Thanks. Okay. That was from Nathan. Right. So in Linux, Nathan, I think what uh, what it boils down to is, it sounds to me like you're you're not too familiar with things like codecs and and how that works. Because really, what it boils down to is, you know, the people who can really super compress without losing quality, those are the people who really understand how those codecs work. In a lot of cases, uh, in your case, it might be better to use a piece of software where you don't really need to know how a codec works you can just use a, a like a, a preset or something like that so of course if you if you understand what codecs are and how they work and how you can use compression uh, loss in a, in a semi losslessly anyways at least visually you wouldn't know um, then I would go with something like uh, like uh, FFmpeg M encoder um, it, being able to use a Vitamux uh, with those tools uh, installed on your Linux system but if you if you don't understand that kind of stuff, then use something like um, uh, DVD, uh, which is for ripping DVDs and converting them, but you can also convert your files and things like that. Uh, that's spelled D-E, pardon me, <coughs> D-E-V-E-D-E, and uh, that's available in your repositories. Um, there it is. Thanks, Zagamoto. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's on the Linux side of things. There's a lot of different ones. Evermind also suggesting DVD rip, uh, which actually has a colon in the middle. Uh, so it says DVD colon rip. But if you search for DVD space rip in repositories, you'll probably find it. That's one that I like to use when ripping uh, DVDs for backups and things like that. Um, certainly even home movies that have been burnt on DVD, it's a good way to get them back off the DVD. Um, acid rip for ripping as well, Evermind is mentioning. The one that I really like on Windows is called Zillisoft uh, Video Converter Ultimate Edition. Um, that's a commercial piece of software. It's like it's cheap, but it it does a really really good job. The reason that I do like Zillisoft is that it has all those presets. It's really really simple for a novice user to be able to create videos. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Doing a search for Zillisoft. 
comes up to video converter. Zillysoft.com. Okay. This is a like I say, a commercial piece of software for Windows. But it its ultimate edition gives you literally a just point and click. I wish that they had better screenshots on here. It has conversion, but it uses Yeah, see there's not very good screenshots. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, here we go. So you you highlight your video, okay? Then you choose your format of output. You'll see over here there's video size, video quality, audio quality, etc. That's basic settings. Now, this is just a screenshot. If I were to click for advanced settings, I would actually be able to select a lot more. There's also profiles. This is what I'm talking about for somebody who doesn't know their way around codecs. You can just change your profile for the specific platform. And here's the kicker. It shows you what the size of the video is going to be when it's output. In that case, it's 30.9 30 megabytes. So that gives you a way to, you can actually adjust it, do a little bit of tweaking, change the bit rate a little bit, get it to that 300 me megabyte mark so that it can be small and, and work for you. That's called Z uh, Zillysoft. Video Converter Ultimate Edition. 60 bucks for the Ultimate. Cool. So, But that one's Windows, right? So there's lots of free ones, and we, we already named a bunch. Uh, DVD is the first one that I would try um, on, uh, on Linux. So. Any other suggestions? Pass them along in the chat room. Uh, we've got to head right over to the newsroom, which is oh. kind of right next to me, technically. Okay. I was going to say, so no more questions right this minute? Nope. Wow. It is time, my friends. It's time. Okay, well. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Some U.S. officials this year are expected to get smartphones capable of handling classified government documents over cellular networks, according to people involved in the project. The phones will run a modified version of Google's Android software, which is being developed as part of an initiative that spans multiple federal agencies and government contractors, these people said. Currently, the United States doesn't allow government workers or soldiers to use smartphones for sending classified messages because the devices have not met security certifications. But with a secure smartphone, a soldier could see a fellow infantry uh, could see fellow infantry on a digital map, or an official could send an important dispatch from Washington's metro subway without fear of security breaches. The government specifically chose Android-powered devices over Apple devices, saying security is everybody's concern. All right, Nikon has announced their highest-resolution DSLR camera, the D800. The 36-megapixel camera produces images that, in TIFF format, are around 212 megabytes, compared with around 3 megabytes for a typical mobile phone photograph. The camera can also film full HD 1080p video and, and includes the advanced recognition system used in Nikon's top-of-the-range D4. It's weather-resistant too and has a 3.2-inch LCD screen that adjusts its brightness using an ambient light sensor. The D800, which will be released in Britain by the end of March, is aimed at high-end enthusiasts and professional photographers and will cost more than £2,000. It doesn't weigh that. It just okay. <laughs> Facebook and Google say they have compiled, complied with an Indian court directive and removed objectionable material. They are among 21 web firms, including Yahoo and Orkut, facing a civil suit in Delhi, accusing them of hosting material that may cause communal unrest. Mm. A criminal case of similar allegations is due to be heard next month. Here's the kicker. Judges have threatened to block sites that fail to crack down on offensive content, but many firms say it is impossible to pre-filter material. Google India, for example, has argued that it is not feasible to pre-monitor material posted by billions of people across the globe. Facebook, however, expresses that they have policies in place which enable people to report abusive content. And Apple has pulled several iPad and iPhone models from its German online store after Motorola Mobility enforced a patent injunction against them. 
The move follows a December ruling that Apple had failed to license one of Motorola's wireless intellectual properties. iPhone users in Germany may also face the loss of their push email iCloud service after a separate patent victory by Motorola. Apple has said it will appeal. So you can get the rest of these stories and the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. Thank you, Eric. This episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by GardenGateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli spread and wheatgrass juice, visit them at GardenGateFarms.com. Also, Pogo Plug. Get your free 5-gigabyte uh, personal cloud at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. And also, I encourage you to check out their device. I love it with my iPod Touch. Ooh. It is fantastic. And it works with those it works with anything. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. But that's You're going to have one. Oh, yeah, you've, got, you've, got, got, a, I've got, some you've got a to pogo do. plug. So there you got go. The pogo plug. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. I've got the Android device. I've got the Blackberry. You're like. You're. you're I'm like geek Moving man. up. No. And then the Blackberry is kind of like. Yeah. Ah, I still love my Blackberry. Do you? Well, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. All right. Leave it at that. Okay. I heard some bad news about BlackBerry today, but that's all right. Oh, what was that? Right? Well, like big companies are dropping them and going to iPhones. And oh. when that happens, I mean, their their shares are kind of finicky anyways. But I think Prime Minister Harper really wants uh, Rim to thrive in Canada. <laughs> I don't know what he's proposing. Well, but it's a Canadian saw, company, right? So it certainly is. And, uh, and a big one at that. And I mean, their landmark. You know... What they've done, what they've created, is is monumental. But then you were talking, you know, going through some yeah rough patches right now. One of the big things about BlackBerry though is the security. That yeah. was that was the key thing about BlackBerry Enterprise Server and right. things like that. So, but now with the military saying that they're going to be using Android devices and making them secure, I wonder if that's going to be that nail in the coffin or what uh, what that's going to lead to might be interesting to oh. I don't know I do not know I don't think it's goodbye security Garby but I think maybe just a transition to uh, like like Eric was saying the government is working on uh, solidifying the security on Android devices so are we going to see that, uh, that that's the way that things start going uh, Android is open so you know they can create Bez kind of style services I'm sure, through their yeah. open platform. So, so where did it possible. all go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I only have a glass of water. I can't engage in this. No, no. Well, well we have time for one more viewer question. One and then, more uh, viewer question. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about uh, controlling our computers okay. with uh, with this guy. Okay. Actually, I've got two here if I'm really quick. No? Real just, quick. Okay. Well, we've got one from the chat room here from Mark just M. Go, uh, yeah, it's like 22. So. Okay. So we'll hurry. Uh, this is from Mark M. Yeah. Robbie, if you have time for a viewer queue, do you have any ideas regarding opening a CMYK file in Linux? Files I receive are mm. .psd, CMYK, print ready, 300 DPI, and I haven't found any Linux software that can open these files. Any help? Appreciated. That's a good, good question because you know, GIMP is RGB. Oh, right. Right. But there is a plugin that you can get CMYK uh, for the GIMP. It's called CMYK Separation Support for the GIMP. Ah. So do a search for that. I'll post links in the show notes for episode number 229. Okay, so there was What that can question. it do? It can convert to CMYK layers, it can save to CMYK, it can do all this stuff. I'm sure it will open it. What, it can't what can do. it do? Oh, uh, oh, into individual layers. Yeah, you're not going to get the same kind of support for CMYK as you would with Photoshop. That's the problem, is that they're Photoshop files, right? In CMYK or whatever else. But there are tools for, uh, for the GIMP. And there are other pieces of software out there, but Google is our friend. So yes. 
yeah, just do some searching around CMYK for GIMP, CMYK for Linux. Uh, pretty, pretty easy to find okay. some of the options there. I don't have a solution for you because I work strictly in RGB. I'm a web guy, right? Sorry, because CMYK, okay. CMYK is your your very like strict print. Yeah, right? and and what looks great on your your screen may not by the time it. Yeah, but then you get stuff like Cafe Press that's all RGB too, and so it becomes like, yeah. where where is the line? Because I sent some stuff to a printer, and it was all RGB, and yeah. it came out looking kind of flat. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. so you want to give them Pantones or something? Yeah, mm-hmm. I needed something. Okay, we're gonna plow through another quick question. Sure, yeah. Okay, and this is also from Robert Grzynski. Hey, Robert. Um, running Ubuntu eleven point. One zero. Hi, Robbie. This is in regards to a question you answered in episode 221 regarding right. accessing a NAS. I have followed your instructions and have had the following error come up. See attached image. Uh, I'll bring it up. I don't see the image. You got the image there? Um, I know that the IP address is correct as the NAS has a display that shows its IP address. And I can access it through Samba. Also, the password I entered is also correct. What could be the problem? Thanks, Robert. The password Melbourne, you Australia. Okay. Sorry, we're going to see if we can get this up, Robert. Okay. There you go. So, created a folder called NAS. Did an LS to see what was in it, which would be nothing. Spelt sudo wrong, but uh, you noticed that, so did it again, sudo mount slash slash 192.168.1.3. So we have to assume, like like you're saying, Robert, that that's the right IP address, that that's the right it's an uppercase share v and with a capital V. It has to be capital V on the share, uh, so it is case sensitive, remember that. Yes. And it says that uh, there is no such device or address. So here's what I would do, Robert. I would go into Nautilus. Okay, so you're your my computer kind of thing in Linux. So in in my system here, it's places, home folder, desktop, whatever. Click on one of those. Hit Control L and type SMB colon slash slash one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot three that's the server so that's going to connect to it via your samba right so when you're there you're going to see a list of all the shares one of them's hopefully going to be videos with a capital v and if that's the case then you've got it right in which case you may need to specify if there's a username and password but the error message you're getting is that it uh it says no such device or address so it, trying with uppercase share name. Yeah, do like I say, it is case sensitive, right? So make absolutely certain that it's the right case. You can do that by going to the actual sh- uh, your actual IP address, preceded with smb colon slash slash. So in my case, for example, right here's the category five share with a capital C. So if I put in a lowercase C, it's not going to work, right? Same with audio as a capital A. Right, so you can see what I mean but there. Clonezilla is a lowercase right. c. So if it's if it's all if it's with a capital V, just double check it that way. That will show you. All right. I don't think it's probably a password thing, but uh, you could try specifying the password right there on your mount line. Uh, that was all outlined in my uh, in my video tutorial as well. So just double check on. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry. Mm. Double check on that. All right. Want some pie? No, thanks. Okay. All right. We're out of time for viewer questions tonight. Thank you for sending your viewer questions in. You can email us live at category5.tv. We'd love to receive them. We'd love to hear from you and uh, be able to answer your questions as best as we can. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, if you're, if you're stumped with anything to do with Linux, Windows, uh, even a little bit of Mac or anything like that, uh, send it our way, uh, even if it's just product specific as far as, you know, what printer should I buy? What do I need to look out for when I'm looking for a backup? Those kinds of things are, you know, good, you know, good food for thought. So tonight I'm looking at uh, iDevices. And and this is just because, uh, yeah, 
this is what this is what I've got is the uh, iPod Touch 4, which is fantastic. I mean, it's a nice little screen and yeah. and uh, touch screen, multi touch. It's not a screen. It's, it's got oh. yeah, <laughs> it's got Wi-Fi, right? So in your case, yeah, definitely the tablet is great for doing remote desktop and things yeah. like that. But what we're going to learn to do tonight is we're going to control the computer with this little device. And uh, there are many different applications where that is very, very useful. I'm going to try to touch on a couple of those tonight. So first thing I want to do on my Linux computer, well, first of all, there's something called VNC, which is free for anyone on any platform. It comes with Linux and most uh, distributions. Uh, they usually call it remote desktop and stuff like that, but it is VNC. There's a driver, a server software that you can run uh, that is available for you to download for your Windows computer at tightvnc.org. Uh, you can get that if you're using Windows, and that will allow you to connect devices to your Windows computer. Very handy. You'll remember when, I was, uh, when uh, Hillary had an interview here at Category 5 uh, with I Am A Smart Kid. I was actually controlling the cameras through this. Which is why I hit the wrong one a couple times, because it is a small screen. <laughs> you should see some of the emails I get from him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Spell check is fantastic, too. Okay. Okay. So on my computer, first thing we need to do is activate this. Again, typevnc.org if you're using Windows. On Linux, it's already installed in most cases. I'm going to go to System, Preferences, and find what they call Remote Desktop. First thing I'm going to do is allow other users to view my desktop, allow users to control my desktop, and leave it so that I must confirm each access. Now, the reason that you'd want to turn that off is if you ever want to access your computer from outside of your network or from upstairs, and you don't want to have to go downstairs and authorize yourself, you can turn that off, but turn on password protection. Make it a strong password. I'm behind a firewall. So I'm not too concerned with security. Okay, so now I can start accepting connections instantly. Brilliant. How's the pie? <laughs> okay, so first things first. Here we go. I'm going to give you a little view of my, uh, my iPod here. I've got a couple of different apps that uh, are really uh, quite good. And I find that this is... This is handy if I'm doing server administration, I'm, I'm using VNC. So I'm going to show you the difference here. VNC, connect. I need to create a new connection. Okay. IP address. I know on my screen it is 10.0.0.70. Of course, you know how to get an IP address if you, if you need it. Just type IF config on Linux. Zero is that like zero. IP config? IP config on Windows. Okay. It's uh, I IP internet protocol on Windows. It's uh, interface on Linux. Okay, there's no password. There's nothing else. So I'm going to hit uh, done. Okay. Back. Now I see 10.0.0.70. I'm going to push it. Asking me for a password, which I had said I don't want one. Let's be sure. Okay, so VNC is not letting me connect just now. 10.0.0.70. I'm going to try using the uh, host name instead, demo. You need to close that or save it? No. The remote desktop preferences before they pick effect? No? No, but it is prompting me for a password, most likely a uh, previous configuration, something along those lines. So I'll enter one. One, two, three, four. There. Let's try connecting now. But I've specified a password. One, two, three, four. Here's open. There we go. For some reason, it wanted to force a password. So you'll see that this is actually, in fact, my screen. Okay. 
User on the computer, Robbie's iPod, mm -hmm. local. Notice I disabled the need to uh, yeah. authorize it, right? So I'm actually controlling my computer. So if I double tap on that image, for example, I'm actually doing that up here, see? Okay, wow. So this is a, an actual VNC connection. Where this is different is I actually see a copy of my screen on my device, which is very cool. This will allow me to, you know, I can move around the screen. I can zoom with multi-touch. Right? This is right on my iPod Touch. It's called VNC. But there's something new as far as, you know, somebody has been a little bit more innovative and said, okay, well, there's more that you can do with VNC. You don't have to necessarily remote in with the whole desktop and, you know, the whole scenario where you're controlling the desktop, which is how I was able to control the cameras. There's another way, and that's to basically use your device as if it was a touchpad, as if it was a mouse, yeah. right? Whereas, okay, here's where things are different. Let's take another look at my device here. I've got another one here. This is, okay, so the first one was called Mocha VNC. And that app is available for you in the iTunes store. Hippo Lite, okay? Hippo Remote is what it's called. There is a commercial version of it. This is the free version. As soon as I fire it up, it automatically detected all VNC connections that are available on my network. There's demo, which I just activated. I'm going to click on it. It'll ask me for a password because I entered one. One, two, three, four. Of course, you're going to use something more secure than that. Done. Connecting to my desktop. Now, what's different about this connection with Hippo is that it's literally a remote control. You'll see that, again, another user is using my computer. But where this is different is that this is like a touchpad for your laptop. Oh, so you're not actually seeing it on the device. Now, on, on, on the screen, the you're, computer not, computer. you're not seeing the, the mouse. So I'm going to do that. See what I'm doing? I double tap so I can move that. You don't see my cursor. So yeah, you actually are controlling your screen as if this was a mouse. Okay. See that? So this now becomes a mouse. Now, if you needed to interact in a different way, Watch this. You've got a keyboard, which is now emulating the keyboard, <laughs> pardon me, on the computer, so that you can uh, actually type on your computer screen. So imagine <clears throat> you've got a big screen TV connected to your computer, and uh, you're able to actually control it with this device here. So it's just like having a mouse, keyboard, everything. Let's you know bring up, just for the sake of a demonstration, bring up a web browser window. And we'll double tap. I'll triple tap. OK, bring up the keyboard. See what it's done. There. This is all done wirelessly from my device. Like, how cool is that, right? Yeah. On the screen here, it's hard for you to see, but it actually does look a little bit like a like a trackpad. You can see that. Yeah. And uh, well, you're <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> and there's actually uh, right click and left click buttons as well <sighs> up here. Okay. And you can see them on my screen here. Right click, left click. And everything is right there. So if I wanted to rename this, for example, right click, rename, and then bring up my keyboard and type folder here. And we're done. Just like that. Go back to mouse version. And everything is done right from here, from a free app. The commercial app does give you some more features as well uh, and allows you to, in fact, uh, pre-program hot 
keys uh, for different pieces of software. So on your okay. screen, you'll actually be able to see buttons that, uh, that control that software. I like the fact that this operates exactly like a mouse. Just like a touchpad. So if, if we're watching TV upstairs, I'll quite often just remote into Becca's computer and I just use it as a mouse because it's up on the TV. Uh. So I can change the show. I can uh, control it. I can make it. I can pause it, make it full screen, whatever I want to do. So that one is called Hippo Remote. And I'm using Hippo uh, Lite, which is available, again, uh, for free in the uh, iTunes App Store if you're using that. So I would be uh, very keen to know if, uh, if there are some Android alternatives, just so that we can post them, uh, what I would encourage you to do is go to the, uh, the show notes for episode number 229 and post your comments, if you know of any. Uh, just go to the bottom of the episode show notes and you'll be able to post those. Do you have stuff like that for your BlackBerry? Oh, no, I'm saying uh, what's available yeah, that for too. BlackBerry that might be worth it. Does anybody out there have a BlackBerry? To be hey, able to easy now. <laughs> they're, f- they're fading out. You know, they're <sighs> fizzing. So. VNC. Like the uh, the first one I showed you, Mocha VNC, mm-hmm. with the screen and everything. I actually use that to administer my server. I have no monitor on the server. So wow. anywhere in the house, actually just VNC to the server, control it, do what I need to do, and close it out. Now, was that a costly app? Free. 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 Oh, okay. And the server software is free as well. And uh, it's at the iTunes store, so I thought maybe it was a... iTunes, is, uh, iTunes store is... Uh, the app store is what I yeah. mean. So you go in and you, you download it for free just to a search for it. So cool. Mocha VNC is the one that allows you to see your screen on your device. And uh, Hippo is the one that allows you to control it just as if you had a touchpad. You can set it on your desk, treat it just like it was a touchpad. Neat stuff. Nice. And I'm sure there are probably alternatives out there for other devices. I was thinking, you know, I, I want to install Hippo on the iPad. <laughs> 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 That's how it got the name Hippo. It's like Hippo Palm to control the computer. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. So great to have you here. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, great to be here. That's neat, eh? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out what's available for my, yeah. my torch. Let us know. And uh, try some stuff on the Samsung tablet, too. That would be very... <laughs> I think, uh, you know, a tablet... I got pie in my teeth. Somebody you do? Just a, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. A little bit of cherry <laughs> topping, you know, all over. Yeah. <laughs> Send in your questions live at category5.tv this week. And, uh, again, don't forget to send in your viewer postcards as well. We love to uh, to receive those. Yeah. Send some to the co-hosts, too. Yeah, that, too. Yeah. They like to receive stuff. I mean, we like food. If somebody's in Ireland, you know, some Jameson's always a nice touch. Um Jameson, what's that? That's an Irish whiskey. Oh. Yes. Okay. Or if you're, you know, in the southwest part of Scotland, there's lots of fine stuff down in Isla, smoky, peaty type mm. stuff. Or if you're in Kentucky, never mind. We'll just <laughs> All of these things that are illegal to send across the border, send oh. them to Eric Kitt. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to behave myself in the future. You try? Yeah. It could happen. So check out our website this week, uh, category5.tv. I am very excited about the uh, content distribution network. Also, you'll notice that the speed, you know, we're working very, very hard to gradually increase the speed and performance and reliability of the website. Been in talks with the hosts, and uh, we're working with uh, with Amazon and, and getting the cloud all set up. And it's working very, very well as far as, you know, what, what I see in the back, and I wish I could show you. Um, but that is to come. So get involved yeah. in the wiki, wiki.category5.tv, and it's an opportunity for you to get your thoughts in as to how we should proceed. So, okay, well, concerned. I'm going to go and visit Agamotto uh, sometime in the off, mm-hmm. uh, off season. And <laughs> <laughs> Next week, uh, I'm excited that, uh, well, Rachel Shu is going to be here, and we're going to be learning to create the ultimate virtual box setup next week. Ah. It's going to have, it's going to be like a headless setup with a web front end that you can access through your web browser that comes complete with console, everything. Everything about it is free. And everything's through your browser. Through Linux. Wow. And your browser. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Next week, the ultimate VirtualBox setup. So make sure you don't miss that. I'll be watching. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Anything going on this week? Playing a lot of hockey? <sighs> Not a lot. I mean, hockey later tonight. Mm-hmm. Hockey Sunday. Um, I may actually make it down to Mississauga. A buddy of mine has a son playing for the Oshawa Generals and another son mm. playing for the uh, Mississauga team. And uh, two sons, opposing teams. So you go to watch? Yeah. Well, oh, going, really? They're yeah, playing so, each other. Yeah, so oh. we're. Uh, I think we've, we've so got a rivalry. half a dozen of us going for, for going for a road trip. Yeah, yeah, that could be fun. I'm cool. hoping. Yeah, It'll probably be a fist fight between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> no lights flickering this week, Richard. No, that's good. Yeah, last week we had uh, three points where the lights flickered, and that was, uh, you know, it was like, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> this week we are golden. Thank you so much golden. again to Cordery Electric. Yeah. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and uh, just great to have you here. And, uh, well, I thanks for having me. Yeah. You, well, you too. <laughs> I was talking to them. I know. Yeah. It's nice to have you here, too. Always a pleasure. Could be worse. There could be two of me here. Yeah. <laughs> I could Eat have brought pie. my banjo. Eat your pie. <laughs> That's Take it easy. I'll bring my banjo. Bring one. your banjo. Yeah. And Yeah. Swift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Bye-bye. Have a great week. We'll be right back.